The topic is the case for RUP, but uh, I believe that if something is working, we shouldn't uh, mess with it. So, uh, because I believe in that, then uh, I have to convince myself and you that there is something that needs to be changed. Otherwise, we are having a happy, beautiful life in beautiful British Columbia. So, uh, the first part of the talk is to identify the problems of first past the post, uh, which is the current system, and what is first past the post. And then, once we identify the specific problems, then we can identify which one of the proposed systems can solve those uh, problems, and that is how we decide which one of them is the best. If we don't identify the problem, if there is no problem, or we don't identify the problems, then how can we choose which one of these systems we have to move to, okay? So let's start with the idea of democracy. So democracy is the rule of majority, and most people believe that the rule of the majority means more than 51% of the vote is majority. However, the word majority has confusion in it. Sometimes it is used when it is, in fact, a plurality or relative majority. Uh, but anyway, democracy means that those who have majority, they should rule. But uh, by, um, you know, 19th uh, century, people, you know, the, the revolution in the United States happened in uh, 18th century, and then the French Revolution and a number of other democratic revolutions happened. But then people started to realize that just having the majority rule is not enough. Um, for example, uh, John Stuart Mill uh, thought that uh, what if the majority of the people decide to kill the, all of the uh, minority? Like they, they very democratically set uh, an assembly and vote and democratically decide that all of the other who are minority, they shouldn't talk. So he identified the, the limitations of majority rule and he called it the tyranny of majority. Um, the, if they have absolute majority, they still cannot limit uh, the personal freedoms, freedom of the speech and other things. Um, read on liberty, it is very short and it is very informative by uh, John Stone. The result is a move toward what is called liberal democracy and this liberal democracy, for those of you who are uh, conservative or liberal, shouldn't make you happy and those who are NDP shouldn't make you unhappy. This is not the Liberal Party. It just means that it is democratic uh, system with the condition that the majority cannot limit the liberties of minorities. Later it has, you know, in the United States has the, you know, liberal means uh, someone who has more progressive ideas. Or on, uh, this topic, on 2007, I had a, a presentation in um, United Kingdom, uh, which I uh, basically focused on a very, um, you know, worse thing than the tyranny of majority, which is the tyranny of weak majority. And weak majority is relative majority. What if um, you know, like in, in the way that the most, a number of voting systems in the world work, what if 40% of people come to power? Uh, and they take all of the power in the legislative assembly. That would be something that I don't, I'm not sure if uh, John Stuart Mill would imagine at the time or not, but um, you will see that it can happen. I want you with show of hand, tell me, is it possible in Canada that one vote, one party get 100% of the seats in the parliament? Is it possible? Yes. Okay. So you know the answer, of course. <laughs> um, so, uh, so a lot of you are silent or, sus you know, um, but today I will show you that it is quite possible and also from theoretical point of view and I will also show you that we have been close to this happening in the life of the past 30 years of politics in Canada uh, multiple times. Okay, anyway, that, so I started to think about this issue um, um, since 2007 and basically my patent and stuff happened after that. 
So uh, what is the story? The story is that um, first past the post system was a system that people in 18th century decided that it is good for the time. Uh, you know, if you are living in 1777 and you want to ask people to vote, then you have to put the ballot box on the back of a horse and let it ride to another state and come back after a couple of days. And uh, there is no computer, no calculator, not even mechanical calculator. Uh, so you have to keep it simple. So there is a system that came out and said that anyone uh, to the credit of people that at the time did it, they chose, they, they did something that after two, 200 years we are still stick with it. Um, uh, but uh, for the time it was revolutionary. That was the reason that it was called revolution in the United States. Um, this thinking that uh, everybody's opinion can even be technically collected was a revolutionary idea. And this method, uh, which is called the relative majority plurality first past the post. Uh, this works very well if you have two uh, two alternatives. Okay? And if you don't have two alternatives, then um, it will cause a problem. So look at this. Here we have uh, three alternatives, and uh, we want to buy something. And now uh, with the uh, you know, if you use first part. So first of all, uh, what do you think we should buy? Okay, this is a party. We have one choice to buy something. Um, uh, you know, these many people like uh, to eat orange. These people like ta tangerine, and these people like banana. Okay, what should we buy? Like using the terminology of John Stuart Mill to maximize the utility which is basically the pleasure of most people. Banana. 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 Oh, banana uh, like these people, I think they like something orange. <laughs> yes. And banana is, those who like banana, they like more energy. Um, and they're different, okay? And basically, this system, the first past the post system, um, which one will, the, will be elected under first past the post system? Banana. Banana, Banana. okay? And then those people who wanted to uh, uh, have orange or tangerine, they have to go with banana. And actually, we cannot ever prove if banana is the best choice or which one of them is the best choice. Because in first past the post system, from information theory, we have missing information. We don't know if the second choice of the people who liked orange is tangerine or, or not. Okay? But, of course, all of you speculated that the second choice of these people would be this and the second choice of these people will be this. Uh, However, we didn't ask them, and everything we say about the true nature of the feelings of these people is based on a speculation. We didn't ask them, so we don't know, actually. So the solution is very simple, and the, the solution is that we, can, uh, we simply have to um, ask them uh, their choices. So this is a, a more realistic example that can happen in any society. This is a society in which uh, there is a strong majority of people who want to decrease taxes. And there is a minority of people that want to increase taxes. They want to increase taxes and do something with it. Okay? Um, and uh, um, basically any voting system that you choose, any, will lead to decreased taxes party as a candidate to be elected. We have two alternatives. We want to make one choice. First past the post works very well. Now we introduce, you know, somebody comes and says, we have to decrease tax for businesses because government needs money. How can we decrease tax for everyone? And then there are people who say that uh, we have to decrease tax for everyone. 
So still the people who make the, you know, they like to decrease the taxes, they are still the majority. But they have this, this difference in opinion that should we decrease the tax for, uh, for everyone or for only for companies? What would be the choice of these people if we use first past the post? Increase taxes, okay? So now it's not that ambiguous. So um, you can think that uh, definitely it's not as ambiguous as the, as the tangerine and orange. Uh, this, is the, the, this is not maximizing the utility of most people. A uh, huge majority of people uh, are interested in decreasing tax. But what will happen is that their representative who believes in increased tax and, and belongs to a party that wants to increase tax will go to the parliament. There are two major problems with this first past the post system. And then these two, two major problems are important to be recognized because then later we want to use them as a criteria to choose the, the best alternative out of the, the ones that are proposed uh, in, the, in this referendum. The first problem is that at the local level, in this specific city, people are interested that someone who represents their ideas to go to the, uh, to the legislative assembly. Okay? And first past the post doesn't satisfy that. The, the technical reason for that is that from here to here, what happened is that uh, an idea which was similar to one of the alternatives was proposed and that causes what is called vote splitting or a spoiler effect, okay? And then in the United States, this happens every 10 years. Like they say, oh, Ralph Nader shouldn't be a candidate because if he's a candidate, then Democrats will vote for Ralph Nader and he is a spoiler. And then 10 years before that, they say um, Ross Pro uh, shouldn't be a lot uh, in places that are following first past the post uh, strategy and it has hurt people, but uh, uh, it has, you know, um, um, we will see that most, uh, most past colonies of United Kingdom have switched, but the United States has not switched, uh, um, and Canada is in the, we are in the next 10 days in the process of switching from this system. Um, so uh, the, this, at the local level, there are two major problems as the result of this vote splitting. One is that a, a minority can win while a vast majority oppose them. Therefore, the representative of the community, that blue guy, is not actually representing the ideas of most people who want their taxes to be decreased. The other problem is that uh, the opinion of me in this jurisdiction will not be represented. 70% of people, let's say 65% of people in this jurisdiction, their ideas will, can be not represented um, in there because this person belongs to a party and that party uh, wants that member of parliament to vote for that specific opinion. Okay. Um, so this is, uh, this is what uh, First Past the Post does. By asking the highest ranking, is by, by giving you an option to choose what you like, like this is one of the uh, voting members of the society. In the first past the post, we say, what do you like? Choose one person. This is how the current ballots that we vote are formed. They ask you in North Van, which one of these candidates do you like? And you vote for one. And the other person votes for the candidate that he likes more. This method hides the other preferences hides the fact that this person, uh, if we don't decrease the business tax, he would like to decrease everyone's tax. And hides the fact that if we are decreasing, if most people decided that we shouldn't decrease tax for everyone, he thinks that at least decrease the tax for businesses. But we don't ask them their second vote, therefore uh, this first past the post uh, hides the information. Now, some historical facts um, that from if, if John Stuart Mill was analyzing this would be unhappy, and I am much more unhappy because I think about, you know, it's even not the tyranny of majority, it's the tyranny of minority. 
uh, or relative majority. So let's see what has happened. These are the past elections in BC. 40% of people voted for NDP in 1991 and they got majority. Complete majority. And you may say, okay, that's relative majority. I am a relativist, fine. Then in 1996, 39% of people voted for liberal and NDP got 100% of power. This is not, we will talk about theory later, but this is not theory. This is the reality. And then, okay, this is the only time that I guess everybody must be happy, you know, everybody who is a Democrat. Uh, 57, a Democrat doesn't mean Democratic Party. So anyway, so 57% of people who have uh, voted for Liberal Party, they got 77 seats. You can say that the majority got, uh, you know, got the power. And after that, Liberals were in power when they had 45%, 45%, and 44% of the power and uh, uh, then we had uh, the last election in which NDP got 40.36 percent of the vote sorry liberals got more vote than NDP but NDP is in power absorb it this is not the new system this is the old system that exists and it has created an unstable government in which the major, the minority is ruling. Okay, because some people have the, have heard and there is propaganda that you know first past the post system uh, gives uh, stability and uh, gives majority rule. I just want you to see that these are now. Does anybody know why this has happened? Yeah. Why? Like, even in the first past the post, you don't think that it should happen. Mm -hmm. It depends on the location of the people who just... Voted. Exactly. We are not asking from all the people in the province. So, in some jurisdictions, the, the people who, who have been in the NDP, they have won with thin majorities. And it doesn't matter in, if in all of the other places, the most people are voting for liberals. As long as the number of seats in the parliament are the majority, the, the, the power goes to that thing. So these are uh, things that we have to pay attention to. Okay, so this is the, uh, the first problem. The second problem is that uh, in the legislative assembly, it is possible that the voice of the other groups can be totally eliminated. This is an example that shows you what you didn't believe at the beginning of the presentation. It is possible that 100% of the people in the Legislative Assembly are from a party that most people don't like. Okay? So these are the people in, let's say this is North Van. Uh, most people want to decrease the tax, but the member of the parliament, based, based on first past the post, will increase the taxes. In this jurisdiction, people want to decrease the tax, but member of the parliament will vote for increasing the tax. And the same will happen here. So three, three people go to the parliament, all of them are voting for uh, uh, basically increasing the taxes, which is most people don't like the taxes to be increased. And this is possible under first past the post, because it um, because it doesn't care about the, the opinion of those who don't have majority, the relative majority. Now you may think, okay, it has never happened. Let us see what has happened. Just look at this. This is, this is an example. Uh, look at this. In this one, which I skipped last time, now look what has happened. With 57% of the vote, Liberals have 77 votes. If there wasn't two areas that NDP won, it could be 100% Liberal. And 
20% of people and all of the others. Uh, how many percent is there? 43% of people could have no voice. So some people think that it's just because of green. It is not just because of green. Uh, just imagine that, you know, if you are a liberal, think about this. This can happen in the next election. This is not that different what we have here. NDP can go to 50% and get all of the seats. So nobody will hear any voice from any liberal if that happens. Something like this, that 77 seats goes to one party and 22 to the others. Uh, sorry, two, uh, two to the others. Right now in the agenda is uh, you know all that, oh, green wants its own share and so forth, which is true. Uh, these 10% of people of the... Uh, BC happening, and right now the real uh, uh, the real uh, chance that exists is that some green people um, may come to power, which is basically getting their you know in the current system they got three seats. It, this may go to seven seats if it is pro you know fully proportional. Let's say six seats, and I promise you that nothing will crash. Okay. Um, so this is the, the situation that, uh, of the second thing. The second problem is very clear in this line. We have been very close to 100, so no voice of the minority to be in the parliament. So what I showed you here as a theoretical example, BC has been very close to actually have that. Now I have a number of other examples, this is in uh, where is that? Ohio, Ohio and uh, Republicans got a thin majority. They have 12 members in the parliament compared to others that have 40, let's say, 8% and 46%, and they have only four members in the, their legislative assembly. Uh, so there are a number of solutions. Parties have come up with a solution for these uh, things, and that is coalition. So they, uh, they say, okay, before the next election, this is the situation that we are happening like all the time. Like, look at these people. They sit there and they think to each other. They say, okay, look, look at this. We are fighting for what type of decrease. So what does the two parties do? They, they, they combine their efforts. So they, they form a new party that is called Conservative Party of Canada, mm -hmm. and then they will win in all of the jurisdictions. Uh, I will show you why they will win. So if these two parties in the same jurisdictions, if they, they uh, combine and create a new party, a coalition party, in all of the jurisdictions, then they will have a majority. They wanted to decrease taxes. This is, this is not... I made this because it has happened in Canada. Actually, you will see that there was two conservative parties. They wanted to decrease taxes. They couldn't. So they made a coalition, and they won all of the vote. Um, but now, look at the problem. Do you think that this has solved the problem of tyranny of weak majority? Okay, what, what the, so the people in the parliament, they said, they said, let's decrease the tax. No, let's decrease the tax for everyone. Let's and then nobody is hearing the voice of those people who say increase the tax. So it didn't change the tyranny. It will make you happy if you are one of those people. Uh, so before, another group were unhappy and now, not unhappy for being ruled, unhappy in terms of John Stuart Mill. They have no voice in the parliament. Okay? So, um, um, the coalition just changes the balance of power in a first past the vote system. Doesn't solve the problem of representation. Um, so um, people also have come up with solution. The solution that people have come up with is tactical voting. So the, again, these are the tactical votings that I think, um, I believe that it has happened in British Columbia in the past um, 19 years that I'm in Canada. Um, you know, just to know how much Canadian we are. Like, we came from the other side of the world, and whenever I say to my wife, let's go to Burnaby, she says Burnaby is too far. <laughs> so the only place that is close to us is North Man. Um, so, um, but look at this. The, 
I live, uh, so uh, some people may think like this. I live in Westman, uh, and I like greens. But uh, greens have not had any, any candidate in the past history of Westman. Therefore, if I... So uh, these two major problems that we see theoretically and empirically exist in first past the post has led to unstable governments, contrary to the myth that um, if we switch from first past the post, the government will be unstable. Look at the stability of the current formation of the government. If the NDP doesn't do one thing that uh, Greens don't like, the government will collapse. And this is not as the result of NDP coming to power, by the way. It's the result of liberals being in power, not changing the system. So is it a stable government? No. Now look at this. In 1993, first past the post in Canada, liberals got power with 41% of the vote. They got 60% of the seat, and it's called majority government. Not because, you know, the other thing that we have to notice. When we say there is a majority government, it doesn't mean that the majority of people want it. It means that the majority of seats are there. So in the history of the past 20 years in British Columbia, it was only once that the majority of people wanted what happened. So, 1993, 41% of the vote got 60% of the seats. The result is an unstable, minority, liberal government, which has 100% of the power. Then, the Canadian Alliance, uh, which was the Reform Party before, and progressive conservative parties, they created a new party, the coalition that we mentioned. So the Conservative Party came, uh, you know, was created, and then uh, they formed a conservative minority government. And so in 2006, we got a, con uh, so basically this was, uh, I guess, Paul Martin, minority government, and it lasted two years and two months. Then we had uh, Stephen Harper, the leader of the coalition got to power, uh, then another election in 2008, another minority government, notice that these were the blue ones, and they don't have more than 50%. Therefore, they had to form a minority government. And for those of you who don't know, a minority government is a government that is ha in a situation in 2006, the formation of the minority conservative government, 36% of people got the majority of seats, uh, not, not the, the relative majority, and they had to form the government. So this, this is the most unstable situation that can happen. They neither have the relative, they, they neither have the majority in terms of people, nor have the majority in the uh, majority of the seats in the parliament. Then we have another unstable minority government uh, in 2008. And then uh, we have the first shutdown of the parliament by the prime minister in 2008. Then we have the second shutdown of the parliament by the prime minister. Then we have the third shutdown of the parliament. And in that stable first past the post system, people went to the streets to protest very stably. And then, uh, then we have in 2011, the unstable minority government collapsed with a no confidence vote in the parliament, and there was another election, and in this one, the conservatives with 39% of the vote, just two more percent increase from what had in the past, they got 54% of the seats, and they formed a, the minority of people formed a majority government in the parliament. Uh, and then again, I, I don't really remember exactly why. At the majority situation, still he tried to <laughs> close the parliament. And uh, then there was another election. This time, uh, again, the, notice that if you have 39% of the vote and your competitor has 38% of the vote, of course, you know, the next election, this is 50-50 chance that the government will collapse. That's the reason that you know, now the liberals with 39% of the vote got the majority 54% in the parliament.
parliament and formed a majority, what is called a majority government, because the majority of seats are there. Now, solution. You already know the solution. The problem was that we didn't ask people what is their second and third and fourth choices. The solution is that to solve this information bug. So we ask from everyone, what is your second choice? And most probably about the decrease of taxes, if you ask these people who want to decrease tax for businesses, their second choice is just to decrease tax for everyone. And those who think that the taxes, um, because they know that if you decrease the taxes, then education will not be free. Blah, blah, blah. So basically, if you think that you decrease the taxes for everyone, then their second choice would be decrease the taxes for, for businesses. And these people, uh, their second choice would be, uh, you know, the less tax or whatever it is. Now, if we, if we ask the people their second choices, the method of asking, or the ballots that you saw at the beginning of today's presentation, is called preferential voting ballot. Okay? So, and that's the reason that we thought that you can, without worry, express your feelings about your preferences. We didn't talk about how we are going to vote these things. How we vote a preferential ballot is a different thing. But if we collect what are your preferences, Actually, we don't have missing information. Good. So this is obvious that this switch solves the fundamental information problem in the system. Now the question is that how do we, uh, you know, basically count this? Um, the in, you know, if you think about the parties in Canada, I think all of them they do this. They ask the people's, you know, the members of the party first preferences, and then they check the one that has the least popularity, they drop it, they go to the next one. But because they, they usually are voting in a, like in a stadium or a hall, uh, all of the people are attending, they do multiple rounds of voting. Okay? It's called runoff voting. Uh, basically, instead of asking at once, like what we did, tell us all of your 16 preferences, they ask the first preference, then they ask the second preference, they ask the third preference, and so forth. Um, it's called runoff voting. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, uh, multiple rounds. We can ask you, as we did, what are your preferences, and then, uh, fortunately, it is not 1777, and the uh, computers can do the job. Now, we ask the people, what are their preferences? They give us all of their the first choice, second choice, and so forth. And now we want to vote. The most common way, um, if we want not to go through, you know, the fact that political parties are all doing runoff voting means that this is the best system. Because when it is about the internal affair of the party, we are not going to leave it to the chaos of first pass the vote. Okay? Um, so that's, that's one. So if you just go home and think about it, whatever parties for, do for themselves is probably the best. However, we cannot do uh, that in the, in the whole society. We cannot go through multiple rounds of voting. Instead, we can ask them, what are your preferences? And what we do is that whatever choice has the least chance of being elected will be dropped. So we go to, in a, you know, if it was in a, you know, party meeting, you would say, okay, look, dear green people, uh, you will never be the choice. You have the least preferred, you are the least preferred option. So uh, you have an option to insist uh, and then the blues will go to power or you can drop your green choice and think about, you know, give you the chance to exercise your voting power um, and we will look at your second choice. And any rational person would say, okay, look at my second choice, don't drop my ballot into the garbage can. And this will result to this. So basically, we remove the green from the domain of possibilities. Why we remove the green from the domain of possibilities? Because they didn't have any chance to be elected anyway. Okay? Now, nobody's vote is in the garbage. Now we ask, look at the second choice of these people. And that reveals the fact that most people like the decrease in the tax. And in this case, a candidate from the uh, decreased taxes for everyone party will go to the parliament. Um, however, uh, there is, it is not still ideal. Uh, this uh, 
uh, what we did is called instant runoff voting. Basically, the system automatically drops the least wanted choice, and uh, or it is called a single transferable vote in a, for a single candidate. Okay? It has a problem, but if we want to, like if we switch for the elections of any area from first past the post to instant runoff voting, that's an improvement. At least the, the person who goes to the uh, to the parliament would be the representative of the ideas of the majority. So, like okay, this yellow person will go to the parliament. However, it doesn't solve the problem of the blue people. But look at the blue people. Blue people, yes, they are minority. They want to increase tax, but they are minority. But they are not represented in the parliament. So they feel that they have no voice. So, yeah, it is better. The, the person who is in the parliament talks about what most people want, but this doesn't solve the problem. If we just convert a jurisdiction's voting system, the final solution happens if we combine the areas. So some of you may think why they are combining the areas. There is a reason for that. Because when we combine the areas, something beautiful happens with single transferable vote, which the, the exact name for it is multi-member single transferable vote. And unfortunately, they didn't mention and differentiate it in the voting you know, literature that they distributed in their society. Most people, don't, they don't see the difference. And I've seen people are confused about this. If we combine a bunch of areas, let's say we combine six areas to one electoral district, and then we decide to elect people, and let's say what is happening in British Columbia, actually they are also increasing a little bit, about 10% the total number of members of the parliament. So we have six jurisdictions combined, and we are going to send seven people to the parliament. Then something beautiful happens. Uh, the, the parties that have a majority, in fact, those who want to decrease the tax, if you look at here, we have 37 people who want to increase the tax. And how many people want to? 53. 53. So most people want to decrease the tax, but 37 people want to increase the tax. If it was just if we apply single transferable vote or instant runoff voting per jurisdiction, not switching to multi-member um, uh, single transferable vote. Let's see what happens. Who goes to the parliament here? Decrease, just, just make a, like we, will re, we will remove their first choice, we will go to their second choice, but the person who goes from this place would be decrease. decrease. Here, two, four, five, eight. Decrease. So here would be the blue, here will be uh, decrease, there will be decrease, decrease, and decrease. So if you just apply a single transferable vote in, in single jurisdictions, it doesn't solve the, the, the proportionality. Still, out of these six areas, only one member will be voting for uh, increase. increase the taxes. Um, so, but if you go with multi-member STV, which is basically what is in the ballot, the simplest way that you can understand is this. Uh, there is a quota that is automatically calculated based on a formula. And the formula is basically if we want to select seven candidates, we divide it by eight. We divide the number of uh, voters by eight. If we want to choose six candidates, we divide by seven. If we want to choose two candidates, we divide by three. Plus one. This is a very simple formula. So in this case, the quota is 12. That means that if you want to send someone to the parliament, you have to have 12 votes. For every 12 votes that you have, you can send one person representing to, to the parliament. That's it. So how many people? The blue 
people can send? You have 37 votes. So they can spend their 12 votes, and three people from this group will go to the parliament. This group has 29 votes. How many people they can send? Two people, and they have extra five votes that cannot send anyone to the parliament. And these 24 people who are green, they can send two people to the parliament. Now, is proportionality there? Yeah, most people are, they, most people want to decrease in taxes. Most people in the parliament want to decrease the taxes. The vote is a split between decreasing the tax for the companies or for all people. That is represented in the parliament. And there are people who want to increase the taxes and their voice will be heard. But they are minority, as they are in the society. And these people will form a coalition government, for sure. Is this coalition government stable? It is very stable. Because if this vote of these people, you know, if one of them convinces the other one that we have to decrease the taxes for everyone, not just for corporations, they are still the coalition government. It would need a huge shift in the public opinion to, to make this coalition government unstable if it is formed like this. So this is the, the solution. And uh, most of the countries that were uh, colonies of the United Kingdom, Great Britain, and uh, uh, were using first past the post, they have moved to some form of uh, Basically, first, preferential voting system, which asks all of your ranking, and then to various forms of single transferable votes. So if you notice in, in the close to England, Ireland, Northern Ireland, Scotland, they have all moved to the system. Uh, many types of uh, elections in Australia is happening in this system, a single transferable vote. Uh, in New Zealand, too. In, even in the United States, uh, there are experiments, um, but um, uh, basically, if we consider Canada very similar to New Zealand and Australia, we are behind. Now, what are the options that are on the ballot? So the first one, you are member proportional. The ballot is like this. Uh, the, the party, you say this is, let's say party A, let's say this is liberal party. You say our first candidate is this, our second candidate is that. And basically every two jurisdictions would be combined and they will ask people to vote for a combination. So you can only put one cross on the choice that you are making which basically says that I agree that this is my first choice and this is the second choice. Mm -hmm. And you don't even have a choice to say which one of the two is your choice. The way that it is listed is dictated by the party and it says this is the first choice, this is the second choice. Okay? You choose one of these and then the way that, uh, so basically you put one mark, the first seat in, let's say, if we, if everybody votes and this choice gets, uh, let's say, 39% and this one gets 36% and 30%, because this is relative majority, this would be the choice of your area and this is the candidate that will go to the uh, legislative assembly. The second person will be pending in this system. Um, so the candidate who the, the party put first will go to the parliament through a first-past-the-post system. So does it solve the problem of first-past-the-post system? It doesn't solve the problem of representation of the opinion of the people in the jurisdiction. But what happens is that later, when all of the first choices, like from this jurisdiction, from the next jurisdiction, and the next jurisdiction, the first people, when they go to the parliament, then they look if it is proportional or not, and then they will distribute the rest of the vote 
based on the opinion of the parties, based on the, the way that uh, party chooses, they will say, okay, this guy from this city will go to balance the, uh, the power in the parliament. So there is no guarantee that this second person would be from your jurisdiction or any other jurisdiction. It's a choice that is made by the party. I don't like the wording of it in the uh, booklet. It says, wherever the candidate did particularly well. Um, very qualitative criteria. And uh, um, so this, uh, I don't think that it solves the uh, It creates a proportionality but uh, people's intervention in the way that the proportionality is made is minimal compared uh, to the two others. And uh, um, so basically it solves one of the problems, which is lack of proportionality in the, in the parliament, but it doesn't address it in a very natural way. Also to prevent the people who are, you know, extreme extremist people in the right, in the left, or the, you know, to prevent those people who have their family voting for them to go to the parliament, they have put a threshold, uh, I call it an artificial threshold, of 5%. Uh, if you don't get 5%, you won't go to the parliament. Where is this coming from? I don't think that there is any theoretical basis for that. Okay? So, therefore, uh, as I have always said, I'm not uh, uh, neutral. I think this is um, not a good choice, although it, it is better than things I suppose. It does not address the, the problems. So basically the way that it will work in a simple situation is that though out, out of those six jurisdictions that we have, we create these uh, you know, uh, uh, combinations of two. And for example, uh, in now you just think about this. If we run a first past the post vote in this combined jurisdiction, who will go to power? Blue. Blue will go. From here, who will go? First past. Because for the first candidate is always first past the post in dual member proportional. From here, who will automatically go with the vote of people? If we combine these two, who has relative majority? No, blue has the, like blue is majority here and is majority here. If we combine them, it's still relative majority. So blue will go to the parliament, and who will go from this combination? Blue. Okay. So from all three uh, combined jurisdictions, blue will go. So this is what elections, you know, VC will have at the end of the processing of the first candidates of the parties. Now they see this is not proportional, of course, because there are so many people who want to have refinery in different locations. So what they do, they now go to the parties and they will ask, okay, for example, in this jurisdiction, your candidate became second. In this jurisdiction also, your candidate became second. And there, and there, and there, and for example, the party would say, I want this candidate and this candidate to go to the parliament. So what happens so here in dual member proportional artificial solution for one of the problems exists, what is not so, representative of the region may be not liked by the majority, people must still vote tactically. So if you are in this jurisdiction, and you don't want the member of this blue party go to the parliament, and you are green, you have to vote for these guys. All of the green, they must tell each other, look, we don't have any hope, so please vote orange. And then with tactical voting, they can send someone orange to the, to the parliament. So still tactical voting will work. And uh, the party power in the, in the uh, parliament is balanced by the party power is now in the making of the decision of who is the first choice, who is the second choice in each area. They decide the first choice and second choice of people. 
um, the situation for independence uh, is uh, problematic. Uh, if a, you know, the independence must also form a party, and uh, it also puts an artificial uh, threshold for who cannot go to the parliament. And I think 5% is much worse than what the third option would Like, I think in the third option, it will, it, the threshold will never go below, below 10%. Just listen to me. I don't think that if people adopt RUP, the threshold that the person can go to the parliament would be less than 10%. While now they are you know, scaring people that if you go to proportionality, then the extreme people go to the power. Actually, the because let's say if, even if there is uh, you know, four people going from one jurisdiction, it would be much higher than ten percent. Okay. So now the second method is better, uh, in my opinion, uh, better than the the first proposal. Multi-member proportional. It gives you the option to choose a person from your area by your election, uh, uh, choosing the name of the person. So again, it's a first past the post voting. You choose this person. It will be first past the post. The person who got 36% of the vote, 30, 30, you know, 25 and so forth. The first person will go to the parliament. So it is obvious that this first person is still is susceptible to tactical voting and all of the flaws of first past the post. Uh, and then once this. Uh, these votes on the right side of the ballot is counted, then they will look at the other side and will check if that can balance the, the votes. So the most important problem of this second one is that still it is first past the post in nature. And all of the flaws that we mentioned exists. Um, the other problem is that when it reaches to the selection of the party uh, people who go to the parliament, okay, uh, you don't even vote for the second person. There is a list that parties will publish and they will say, we will use these people in this order to go to the parliament and create proportionality. And then um, different ways that it can be done is closed list, open list, and open list with party option, which is basically the first one says that there is a list that party says is uh, gives it to the you know uh, elections we see and from that list the proportionality will be created second one is that you know it's open people vote for individual candidates from specific parties so it's like this side of it will have the name of the candidates which is not shown to us here but it could be that the name of the candidates is revealed and people vote for them and there is also open list with party option, like you will vote for a person and also on a party, which is much more complicated than what we see here. But uh, it's not because of the complexity that I don't like this. The reason that I don't like this is that this is what will happen. Um, from each one of these combined jurisdictions, a person will go to after we have voters, and you know that three candidates are from this party and two candidates are from that party. There is no problem having coalition. But in this system, if it is fair, if you just vote for one person, look at this, this is not like the ballot that George gave you at the beginning of today's session. You just put a cross. So we don't know what is your second choice. Okay. Therefore, when the person from a jurisdiction goes to the parliament as the candidate from your local area, all of them would be blue, and nobody asks you about your second choices. Okay? And the only solution are the two classical solutions for first past the post. A speculative co coalition, like these people have to speculate and do polling and those kind of things and realize that they have to create a coalition before the election. Uh, or people have to vote tactically. And then these things, these three other people, come from uh, one of these three ballots that are not clear yet which one of them it will be. NDP realized that this is not a good 
popular choice. People don't like a closed list by a party determine who will go to the election. So they recently said that it is off the table, which is a good move. Now, um, but it created a mess in the propaganda domain. Um, but it is good, for me, it is good that it is dropped from the domain of possibilities. Still, between these two, it is um, an ambiguity. You see the, so the problems that uh, uh, remains with multi-member proportionality is that, uh, to me, it's an artificial solution because the people uh, first go to the parliament with first past the post and then we are trying to adjust a non-proportional outcome through uh, the party list. The representative of the region may not be liked by the majority. People must still vote tactically. Uh, party power influences those closed lists, open lists, or whatever it is. And independent situations, again, would be uh, in, you know, it will weaken the situation for independence. Now, the one that I like, for those of you who noticed what was the problem of first past the post, once you look at the ballot, you know this is the solution. Because we knew that we, the information that is missing is the preference of people. So those who have followed uh, from the beginning of the discussion till now, they don't need more reason that this is better. Okay? This, is the, this is the ballot that asks your first preference. If you don't want to disclose it, just mention your first preferences. Uh, but also it asks you the second preference, that if your first preference doesn't have majority, then they will look at your next preferences. So it is a multi-member single transferable vote which was the one that I, you know, theoretically we saw it's the best solution. Uh, uh, it could be worse than this, like it could be single transferable vote in every jurisdiction, which we already saw it's not a good idea. By having multi-member single transferability, it will automatically create the proportionality. And the other thing is that uh, the minimum number of people that go from each jurisdiction it's not like I say it is 5% everywhere. It depends to the number of people in each jurisdiction, and it depends to the number of candidates that are in each jurisdiction. So let's say if there are 100 people, and we have to elect four people, what is the threshold? 100, we want to elect four people. So divide 100 by five, 20, and plus one, you have to get 21% of your vote consumed or attributed to a person to push him to the parliament. You don't have 21% of people, like you're a terrorist, you will not go to the parliament. Okay? And this 5% is not dictated by my idea or someone else's idea. Yeah. Now, do you want that this threshold to go down? You think that it is not good that 21, you know, if you have 20% vote, you cannot send anyone to the parliament? I agree with you. We have to make the size of the parliament and instead of being 90 people, it must be 100 people. Then the number of people from this jurisdiction, instead of being 4, will be 5. Mm -hmm. And the threshold would be 100 divided by 6. And it would be like 16%. Now those people who have 15% of the vote cannot go. Mm. Do you have the budget? You know, do you want to send 200 people to the parliament? Fine then the threshold will be 10%. Mm -hmm. okay? And it will never be 5%. So the threshold of RUP is higher than all of the others. And the proportionality is not by intervention of any political party. The residue of first past the post is still in RUP. So that is not, that is not what I, like, would be ideal for me. Uh, but there is, I understand why this um, MMP exists for rural areas. The rural areas in British Columbia, and I think in Canada, they have a special thing uh, that is different than theory. Very small communities that I have dealt with in my research, far from each other, mm -hmm. and we cannot enforce them to think of a candidate that represents all of them. Mm -hmm. um, therefore, they're willing to accept the risk of first past the post, uh, but uh, wanting someone that they know in you know, a community of 5,000 people in northern British Columbia, 
and they want one of their uh, members that they know in their community to go. And I think it is already considered, like if it needs, uh, right now even, at the current system, if it needs 20,000 people to send someone from Vancouver to the parliament, in some jurisdictions in northern British Columbia, it's like 7,000, which I think is reasonable because, uh, because of the nature and dispersity of the dispersion of the people and communities in northern British Columbia. So, although theoretically, um, I would like to see multi-member, single transferable vote everywhere, but considering the geo geographical situation in British Columbia and the distribution of population, um, um, I think this distinction could be done. But if I was doing it, I would choose, instead of a first past the post to all you know, party involvement and those kind of things, I would choose single transferable vote for a single person, the one that we started today's session with. So if I was designing the system, I would make it single transferable vote for rural communities and multi-member single transferable vote and you know, merging. This one would solve everything and this one would solve the representation problem. So anyway, we don't have that on the ballot, uh, but out of all of the things we have, for 80% of people and decisions, it will be ideal. And for rural communities, I think they will be happy considering their own situation. So there is a residue of first past the post, but it is, I think it is fine. Um, for 80% of the people, the problem of representation will be solved. Tactical voting in cities is meaningless because we are asking people all of their preferences. And the quota is determined by the budget and uh, it's definitely more than 5% and there's no chance of you know, minority extreme groups to go to the parliament. Um, so this is the situation that will happen if um, in British Columbia it happens. These are the rural areas with little population. These are urban areas with a lot of population. And what we will do is that we will merge, uh, for example, four jurisdictions in the uh, urban areas to form a STV voting system. And we will merge two by two, you know, two villages that are close to each other, another two and another two, and a multi-member proportional system for those, uh, you know, dual communities close to each other. Uh, the way that it will work is that for the rural environment, two uh, people would be elected with first past the post, and these two will be adjusted by the party list. I hope that it will be open party list with uh, people's input and so forth. And uh, for bigger communities, these will be combined. A true proportional system will be there. As you see here in this example, I made it such that blue has majority. Therefore, blue has majority in the parliament and the voice of the other people is also in the parliament. And overall, the blue will have majority in this specific example that I put there. So this is an example. Those uh, things that you see at the top, uh, these are not uh, you know, ants walking. This is in Persian. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Um, 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 I, I, I missed to, to change it. Um, now, this is a scenario that we walk through to understand an example, an easy example. Let's assume that uh, uh, we give people to choose uh, candidates that are liberal, NDP, and green. Okay? So here we have five people who have chosen a candidate that was liberal. Their second choice is NDP and green. And I made that to be realistic, like if you are a liberal, the chance that your second choice is NDP is low. Most liberals, their second choice may be green and NDP in British Columbia. And uh, then for NDP people, their second choice is green and the third choice is liberal. There are some NDP people who their second choice is liberal and their third choice is green. And uh, notice that there have been 30 ballots that have voted like each other. Um, in your case, uh, what George is dealing with is very complicated because you have 16 choices. 
and maybe all your ballots are unique. Mm. What is simplified here is that I'm assuming that a lot of people have voted very similarly. Okay? Um, so now, um, the, um, when we want to think about who, let's say we want to choose four, the four is in English, so it's obvious, we are choosing four people to go to the parliament. Okay? And there are 45 people. So first of all, we have four candidates. What would be the quota? 21. 21. Okay, calculate it. I will randomly choose you and you have to answer on the microphone. 21 100 people and uh, we have four candidates. What is the quota? 21. 21. No, no. 26. 26. Four plus one. You have to add one to four. Five. 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 Oh, so 100 divided one. by 5 gives us 20 plus one. plus 1. So you have to have 21 votes and spend 21 of your voting power, whatever you can call it, uh, then uh, that one person will go uh, to, the, to the thing. So we can imagine that uh, out of these 45 people whose uh, first choice was NDP, they can send uh, how many people? 45... Two people. You can send two people. The liberals can send uh, how many people? One. Twenty. Oh, they can send only one person, right? And then the green has twenty votes. No. They cannot send anyone. But look, what happens is that after NDP sends their two candidates, how much, uh, how much power they have? The NDP. So they have three votes, and their vote is like mostly NDP green lip and least is NDP lip green. Mm -hmm. Therefore, this portion, 2.68 of their vote, this is the transferability, single transfer. So this 2.68 will go to green and this 0.34 will go to lip. Uh, to lip and a green will also go to, to the parliament as the result of this automatic distribution of the residue. And now we have everyone in the parliament with a beautiful majority. Uh, and by that, I finish uh, my presentation and the most which is... So my name is George Hill. Uh, I am I'm a recent graduate of civil engineering at UBC. I'm also a volunteer with Fair Vote Canada and a group uh, called Vote Urban Rural Proportional. And we've been campaigning for this particular system uh, for the past uh, three or four months now. Um, yeah, and that's, that's, that's where I am. I set up a little ballot box at the back there so you can fold up your ballot nice and tightly and put it in the ballot box. Maybe explain how the... Uh, what how, how to vote? Yeah. yeah. So how to vote, you, it's really, really simple. All you do is you put a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, and so on on the person that you would like to have elected in that order. So it's, let's say that your first choice is Jane Thornthwaite, and you would put a 1 beside her name. And then maybe your second choice is Bonwin Ma, so you put a 2 beside her name. Um, just make sure that you don't mark two people with first, so you can't put both of them as your first choice. You have to choose one as your first choice. And also don't skip a ranking. So don't go one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, because, uh, yeah, that will make it, you know, well, what's your third choice? Yes, question. Um, do we just vote for the candidates that are in our area? I see there's different areas of North Bay Lonsdale. It is completely up to you. You can vote by the area, you can vote by party, you can vote completely by the candidate, and whether you like the candidate or not, it's totally up to you. You can put as many rankings on the ballot as you like, or you can put as few rankings on the ballot as you like. You can put just a one, and you can leave it at that, and that will still count. Or you can rank all 16, and that will still count. It's, it's, uh, it's a very diverse ballot, so you can choose however, however you want to fill it out, you, that's what you can do. There are no rules other than the no repeats and don't skip a number. Yeah, and so, some, uh, some of the political questions, let me answer. Uh, if you are a diehard liberal, 
you can choose all the liberals that you like in order and leave everything else empty. If you are a diehard uh, NDP, do the same thing. If you are, if you want to choose, you, you, you think that some of the candidates of Green are also legitimate and would work for what you want, then put them in any order that you like. So, um, and also a, a good point that you have to pay attention to. Let's assume that you are a liberal and your second choice is uh, green. Okay? You have two options. One is that just vote for liberals. The other option is, in that case, your votes for liberals will be enforcing as many people who are liberal to the to the uh, you know legislative assembly, uh, and uh, if you if you leave everything else empty, then you are not participating in the rest of the uh, election. So that's your choice. For you, it will be a first past the post. But those other people who decide to fill in the rest of the vote, let's say if you like that if. Uh, uh, the liberal candidate couldn't go to the, you know, let's say the fourth liberal candidate that you are voting for didn't get the, the enough vote. Then your green vote will be counted. If you so you will help a green person to go. Otherwise, you can leave it empty, and then you are not helping any green person. The same is for a person who is green. If you are green, you can just p vote for green uh, and leave the, the rest empty. But I would suggest you feel, you know, uh, the rest of your preferences such that if your last green candidate, which is most likely wouldn't get, you know, not all of your green candidates may get the enough vote. So feel the liberal candidates or NDP candidates that you think are preferred after your green candidate. That will help your power, like your electoral or voting power, to be transferred to the second person or second party that you are interested in. However, if you, basically, there are people who have promised to themselves that they will, you know, they have told their mother that they will never move from first past the post, then do so. Just vote for the first party that you like for, and this ballot will work for you as a first past the post. That, so that covers off the, the first column, candidate name, and the second column, affiliation. What, what about the local area? So Just I, for your if information. I in, if I live in uh, uh, North Vancouver, Seymour, um, and I put West Vancouver, Sea to Sky as number one. So no, you put the name, you, put the, you rank the person, but that person belongs to that area and belongs to that party. So, so you, it, it's important to recognize with... With, 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 uh, with this system, you end up having, instead of one member per riding, and you having five ridings, you would end up having one riding that would elect five people, if that makes sense. Yeah. So it will make sense. Sir. So, how so you, there, there is a, there's a local beside the name. So if you are really concerned about your local politics, you are absolutely, you can look on the ballot and see, oh, I can see all these four people are from what from like Lynn Valley, and I could rank them one, two, three, four, five if I really like my local candidates. So the the little affiliation, the party affiliation, and the and the where they're from, is only just to indicate a little bit more information to you about where these people are from. Mm -hmm. If that if, if, if that helps. You mean we are not limited to the Area. place that we live. Yes. Okay. So it would be one North Shore riding electing five MLAs to the provincial legislature. Okay. I want you to trust me and nothing can hurt you. Just just put them in order that you like them. Whatever is your preference. And then you will see the result at the end. And this whole the next hour you will learn what is going to happen. But by ranking what you prefer, it's called preferential ballot. By ranking your preferences, nothing wrong can happen to you, especially today, because none of these guys are going to the parliament. Okay, <laughs> just write your name. So just while we're waiting, the, this ranked ballot table. Imagine each column like this is like one of your ballots here. So you can see that in this person, ranked Frida first, 
ranked Bill second, ranked Amy fourth, and, and Saul third. And you can see all of the different persons that are elected. This example, this small example that I'm showing you, you can actually, uh, if you look up STV sample election, this is a this is a, a sample election that the citizens the citizens assembly in 2009 did for the referendum, and this is an example of how they demonstrated how STV works and the transferring of votes. Um, and they did the same kind of thing that Dr. Amir was talking about with grouping the ballot number of ballots of like similar ballots into like one category. So. Here we have, assuming that 800 people voted in this particular fashion. So um, now a lot of this stuff is kind of, you don't have to understand, but what, what, what you should notice here is that when we count up everyone's first choice, because that's the first thing that we're going to look at, and we're going to say, how many votes did free to get for her first, as a first choice. So we, we go and we look at the table and we say, okay, so this ballot received a first vote and this one received a first vote. So that's 800 plus 700. And that means that Frida received 1,500 votes in round one. Then we're going to look at Bill. Bill only had one person, 750 votes. So you can see he had 750 first place votes and so on for the rest. Now, we're going to look at these numbers here, and we're going to say, okay, Frida is our obvious winner. From If we were doing a first-past-the-post election, you would be electing Frida only. This is, this is an example. This is an example. This is an example. I'll, I, will show you, I will show you your ballots in a sec. This is the simple one. So now we say, well, the quota here... We have 5,000 ballots, and we have five candidates. So calculating our quota is 1,250 plus one. So we see here that Frida has met that quota. She is above the quota. And so what we do is we say that she has in excess 249 votes above the quota that she doesn't need to be elected. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take all of the 1,500 votes for Frida, and we're going to look at who her second choice candidate is. So we say, OK, second choice for Frida, we see in this ballot is Bill. 800 people wanted Bill for their second choice. And 700 people wanted Saul for their second choice. Yes? Sorry, how does the quota? Calculate again because so that's four. five thousand divided by four plus one. Should it be no, no, three plus three people are selected, right? Three. Oh, yes. Three. So three, three plus one is four. Five thousand oh, okay. divided by four plus one. Sorry, okay, I that probably should have. Yeah. Um, in our election, we're going to be electing five people, but for here, we're going to elect three people. Um, so yeah, eight hundred people chose Bill, and seven hundred people chose. Uh, Saul. Now we can't just transfer 800 and 700 votes because that would be unfair. Uh, that would ruin everyone else's choices. So we have to proportionize those results. So we say that 800 and 700, we say that 800 over 1500, so that percentage of votes that chose Bill as their second choice is about just over 50%. Does that make sense? So you have 800 of the total 1,500 people who voted for three to first wanted Bill as their second choice, which is just over 50%. So we take that percentage, we multiply it by that, that excess votes. And that means that Bill is going to get 133 votes here, 133 votes in a vote transfer that's going to go on to their next choice. And the same, in the same way, Saul is going to get 116 votes, votes because he was a little bit less than 50%. So if this was 750 and this was 750, then these two numbers would be the same, if that makes any sense. And they both add to 249. They do. They both add to 249. And you'll see. So here, 
now we're at round two, round two. And so we say, okay, has anyone met the quota? No, that means they didn't get enough votes to get elected. So what we have to do is we have to eliminate someone from the process. So we have to say, well, Bill, sadly, even though he was the second choice of Frida, did not receive more votes than any other person. So we eliminate him from the race. Now, in eliminating him, we need to transfer the votes of his second choice. So we look, we come back over to Bill. Now we say, Bill here, the first choice of people who voted for Bill, all of them were 750 people voted Bill, had their second choice as Saul. Now because all of his votes are eliminated and nothing helped to elect him, we're going to transfer all of his votes to the next person. So we say 833 votes are going to get transferred to Saul here. And we see that Saul 833 plus 916 will give us 1,799. And we move on to the next round. And in the same way that Frida had her votes transferred when she was elected, because we noticed that 1,799 is greater than the quota. She was, and uh, Saul becomes the second person to be elected. And in the same thing, this is uh, fairly methodical, right? Who, what, what happens next? Anyone guess? <laughs> what, what, what happens here? Which one has the minimum uh, vote to just so Saul, so Saul has more votes than the quota. So what do we have to do with those votes? Yeah, we got to transfer those to the other people. So then we go back to we look at Saul's we look at Saul's second choice, and we say that Saul. So people who voted for Saul, we see that. Um, um, yes, yeah, so we have to transfer those excess votes to the next people. And so we're looking at this graph here, and we're seeing that people who voted for Saul, you see this person was the second vote, but Saul's getting eliminated. So we take, we, then we go on to the third vote. For this person. So we're going, you can see we're going up the ballot mm -hmm. as we go on this kind of transfer of votes uh, with that kind of, if they're over the vote, then we take that little, we look at all of the ballots to make sure everyone is included. We take the percentage of people that are over it, and then we move their vote and pass it on to the next person. So instead of every vote will count, you have to say every gram of every vote will count. So Yeah. So we look at we look at the numbers, we scroll over, and we get, here we can see that more of the votes, more of the people who voted for, for Saul and the people who Frida voted for Saul ended up preferring Amy over they did Peter. And Amy then met the threshold and was then elected as our third candidate. And the election is complete. You've elected three people which is Frida, Amy, and Bill. And you can see that Peter had the next, if there were four candidates, Peter would be the next person elected. Now, so this, do you, do you guys have any questions about this simpler example? Okay, so are you excited to see the results of the actual? Um, I have a little uh, graph for you to show you. You might have to watch kind of carefully. Oh, you're in. Mm -hmm. This is the transfer in action, right? Yes. So are you noticing that like sometimes the bottom person is being eliminated and the purple distributes across the second choices? Then when the person gets above, Excuse me. Yes. The first and second have the same rate, yeah? No, the first person, if he has the quota, will go to the parliament. Oh, yeah. If he doesn't, 
then we, we remove the last, the least wanted choice, and we distribute the vote of those people who voted that last choice, they are still part of the citizens. So their vote would be distributed, and we do this until one person gets absolute quota. So anyways, this is the animation. And the animation is all colorful, but it doesn't really help you see what happens on your ballot. We can see here that Dana Moore Taylor, uh, Tristan Andrew Galbraith, Ralph Sultan, Fonwin Ma, and Michael Rene Shara were the five people elected in this election. So, um, yes. I want to add something. Just look here. For, just because of the propaganda that is out there. In this system, did we vote for parties at all? No. We voted for people. Mm -hmm. But look what happened in the party domain. We have two people from NDP, one liberal, what is the gray? That's an independent. Independent and the green? That's a, that's a green. <laughs> the green. So, <laughs> so look at this. Although we voted for people, the proportionality goes in the domain of parties as well. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna, whoops, I'm gonna scroll up and I'm gonna look at our table here. And you guys can follow along and see the uh, results as we go. So, um, actually, first off, I'm going to show you the ballot table. I counted everyone's vote as uh, as if you were representing a hundred people to make it a bit more interesting with the ballot numbers. So, our total number of ballots was three. We had thirty ballots. So that's three thousand valid ballots. If I'm counting each of you, our votes is like. 100 votes. And you can look at your number on the top right and just verify, if you want to verify, that this is indeed correct and the order is correct. And you can see, um, so if I have ballot number 7, I could see that 4, 3, 6, 5, 1, 2 indeed matches what I had on my ballot. If you see anything drastically wrong, you can tell me. Um, now we're going to look at the results. So, round one results. So, what is the quota? The quota is 501. Nice, easy number. So, here we can see that Dana Moore Taylor received 500 votes. She is oh so close to meeting that quota, but not quite. Um, but our first, our first, oh, we see Bang Ma has 900. She's received 900 votes. She has 399 votes. And so uh, if you have Bonwin Ma first, I, I want you to look and see. Uh, if you write Bonwin Ma first, I want you to look and see who your second choice candidate. And you can see that the second choices here are being transferred out. And as you go down the list, if you have a pen, you can actually like kind of cross off as you go down. And you can see the vote transfer happening on your own ballot. So 266 for Michael Shabune Shara, 44 to Michelle, and 44 to Mahidi. Um, this is actually telling me that most people who chose Bon Wun Ma first actually had a high preference for choosing an NDP candidate as their second choice. And some chose the Green candidate as their second choice. Um, so she's elected. Then we go on to round two. No one reached the quota. No one reached the quota. So we end up eliminating Richie Warrington. And no one on their ballot gave Richard Warrington a first choice. And so he has zero votes, right? Um, so even if you ranked him maybe third or fourth or fifth, he was eliminated because you didn't rank him first. No one ranked him first. Um, all of his votes are going to be, uh, and there's no votes to transfer. Since he didn't have any votes, he can't transfer any votes. Now what happens, say you ranked Richard Warrington fifth. Um, what happens is that if we were on the fourth ranking, it would actually skip over and transfer to your sixth person. Um, same with Clayton Wellwood, Michael Cambridge, and Jane Ann Thornthwaite received zero first choice votes. And so they were all eliminated. Michael Markwick was the next person with 44 votes, 
His vote's getting transferred to Ralph Sultan. Then we got, uh, it was uh, Jordan, Michael Marwick was eliminated. Yeah. May, may I say something? Yeah. Those who are liberal here, your vote was broken. Vote splitting and a spoiler effect. But don't worry. You you voted for whatever you wanted, then it is transferred to Ralph Sultan. If Ralph Sultan is not elected, it will be transferred to your next choice. So you freely voted for your liberal candidate, and a liberal candidate will end up to be, according to your preferences, in the... So although the vote of liberals was broken, you still will have a candidate. Uh, next was Michelle. And she was eliminated with 44 votes. It's going to... Uh, this, I can't, I can't see it anymore. You can see it transferred. Now Jordan Sturdy was eliminated. He had 100 votes. Votes transferred to, I think this is uh, a liberal candidate. Um, so people who, who didn't like, so if you voted for Jordan Sturdy and you liked him and he was eliminated, your votes went on to Naomi. This, no, Naomi. There you go. Um, then Joshua Johnson, the Green, was eliminated. And his 100 votes went to the Independent and to, I think that's Ralph Sultan here. Then Tristan received six, he's the independent, he received 600 votes. So um, then his next votes went to Green and to Ralph Sultan. Then Dana Moore Taylor had the excess, finally received that one extra vote to get elected. And she was elected. Um, now, you see this number here, this little one? Now what that means is that by, that, by this point, um, if you ranked Tristan on your sheet and he was your last ranking, then what happens to your vote if you didn't choose another, another person after that? It just disappears, right? You, you, you've decided that none of the candidates after that deserve your vote. You don't care, you don't like anyone else on the ballot, and you don't want your vote to go towards anyone else. You think they're equally all bad. But uh, so one vote of so what is it? yeah, 33 votes were lost here, one vote was lost here. You can see a hundred votes were lost here of people. So by filling in your ballot further, less votes are lost. But that's totally a democratic choice that you make by, it's the same thing in first past the post. If you choose to democratically show up to the poll and then not mark anything on your ballot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, they, they do note those. They mark it as spoiled ballots. Um, yep, continuing down, Naomi. And eventually we can see that we have Dana Moore Taylor elected, Michael elected, and Ralph Sultan elected. And I like doing that little uh, the little graph because I think that shows it better than just looking at the numbers. And I can actually um, I can actually cause it to go a bit more slowly so that we can look at it in more detail. Okay, it's going to give me a little box to say continue to break it before it moves on to the next. So we can see here this is round one. Bon, what's the, we remember that the the quota is 500, so Bonwin Ma has, has way more than 500. So we can see what's going to happen next. So you saw that. All of her votes got redistributed. Maybe I should slow that down even further, or is that good? It's good. good. It's good. Okay. Um, Right? Someone was probably eliminated, and the reason you probably didn't see anything was because that person didn't have any votes. <laughs> um, which is why I was kind of confused watching this earlier, saying, like, why isn't it doing anything? Because the person doesn't have any votes to check there. I click on OK. Oh, there we go. Do you see that? Michael Marwick's votes were transferred to Ralph Salson. Then we have, oh, Michelle was transferred to Mahiti. Jordan was transferred to, to Naomi. 
Mm. Joshua's went to Tristan and Ralph. Oh, uh, Tristan was elected, and his votes went to Dana Mayor Taylor and Ralph Sultan. Oh, and Dana Moore's went to a whole bunch of different people, Ralph, Naomi, and Michael. And that's uh, Dana Moore Taylor being elected. And I think we, I don't know, is, is it Bonham? Oh, Clayton Wellwood was eliminated, and his votes went to Ralph Sultan. Naomi Yanamoto was it was eliminated. Um, eliminated. Mahini was eliminated. All of her votes went to Michael. And then the last votes went into Ralph Sultan. And we have our five people elected. Yeah. I hope this has made it easier to understand. And maybe, maybe hopefully all of you with your votes got something that you wanted out of this from, from your ballot. And it was uh, useful to see kind of how the process works and what your, what your ballot ends up doing. Where's the microphone? Here, sorry. I want to tell you that no one in British Columbia has this luxury to see this. And it's all thanks to my friend. That was unique. Can I claim that nobody has done this? Before? I don't think so. Yes. So, yeah. yes. May I have a few questions? Yes, Is it time? Yes, yes. Uh, my first question is that when I expressed these uh, things to my friends, there were some objections. Uh, may I have those objections, then, then uh, get your answers. Sure. First one was uh, this ambiguity regarding uh, the letters, the mails that they have received, that this is going to go to legislature later. So if you are going to change it, maybe the legislature is in the hands of the NDP, so they can change it, and it is not completely revealed. Is it real or not? So uh, there, the, the auditor, auditor general, auditor general produced a report that detailed all of the decisions that had to, that have to be made after the election and all the decisions that were made before the election. And what they what they will do is they'll look at the results of the referendum and they will say uh, that they need to sit down and they have an all party committee that I think was going to include. I think it was 10 people, and it was going to be four, five NDP, four, four liberals, and one green. I think and it was an all-party committee that they were going to have to make those decisions after. Yeah, maybe well, you. There are three more objections. Uh, the second one was that uh, one, uh, one of my friends told me that, okay, now at the moment with the current system, I know, for example, uh, Mr. X in West Vancouver, but when is, it is going to this system, it will be diluted. So uh, maybe the person from Richmond can have more votes for their uh, representative than mine in the West Vancouver, so my representative can be lost. Is it true or not? It is true for the MMP, and uh, DMP. But not for the RU. No, for this one you vote for the person. And you vote for the person that is the combination of the three jurisdictions that are combined. But if they will be all areas will be collected. So in this case... There is no all areas. There is no, it's not on the... Back. Oh, so it is not... Yeah. We are going to merge a number of areas together and then they will have some multi-member areas. And then the... Proportionality will be within that area, and then if it is rural area, two two communities will be combined. You know, there is impossible. Like if they want to combine all of the areas in the North Shore with all of the areas in downtown and Richmond, then every ballot would be twenty choices. So it is not <laughs> as this. More. <laughs> so it is not as this that West Vancouver, for example, go for far far away area. Not at all. If nobody has officially said that, and I have not heard such a speculation. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that is that um, um, is Northman, Westman, and Squamish, or Northman, Westman, and 
What was the other one? So, the, so, so the question is that how far we go? Is Squamish considered uh, semi-urban or it's considered village? So that is the most thing. Okay. Um, you know. And the, another objection was for the Greens, that what will happen to the Greens if they won't pass that minnow? Is it possible that they will lose their ability to In some areas, elect? yes. In some areas, no. But whatever is, is that, they, they will have a better chance than what they have now. Mm -hmm. Like in, in some areas that they have only, you know, few people liking them, they will have... No, no matter what, it's, it's like any other group. Like if there is some people, like if my and my families vote for me, I won't go to the parliament. Okay, uh, the, you have, must have enough number of you know people supporting you. There are there are areas that green candidate is the first candidate. There are areas that nobody likes green candidate. So in those areas, have a, so everything is that should be. Like, did you like that green would go to the parliament from every jurisdiction? So, so yes, in some areas, Green won't go to the parliament. And in some areas, the Liberal won't go to the parliament, as even, even right now in, in Victoria, the Green Party went to the parliament and Liberals didn't, because they didn't have enough vote. Thank you. Okay, sorry. Uh, what do I notice for the final result? Uh, the first meeting, uh, the first meeting of each party is this uh, selection. Can you show the final result? Uh, yeah, I just might have to step through one more time. So, because people are voting for um, for the parties, they put the numbers in a row. It matters which name is the first. Yes, there is yes, a, it does. In, in preferential voting system, there is a technique of randomization. So every ballot will have a random sort of the candidates. So that, that bias doesn't happen. Yeah, George, uh, Professor, thank you very much for that talk. Very yeah. informative. <laughs> um, historically, once systems like these are adopted, do more parties get formed and join? Like, do, do more people get encouraged to form parties? Or do you have any uh, data where, in other countries, what, what has happened? It will definitely encourage more participation. And one reason that people don't participate, and everybody is showing themselves puzzled, there is no puzzle. Let's say if you are living in, in Westman and you are an NDP person, okay? You may think to yourself, okay, what, what, why should I vote? Uh, there is no chance that my vote will count. But if, if all of the areas in North Shore are combined and you are an NDP in North Man, uh, in Westman, you will vote. Because maybe one of the candidates of the region will go. And the same is in Burnaby. Burnaby has been uh, an NDP bastion. Right? So if you're a conservative in, in, in Burnaby, you wouldn't vote. Why, why should you bother? When, once this happens, the citizen participation will definitely go higher. And in some countries it has gone higher, in some countries it went higher and then fl flattened again. But there, uh, one reason for people not to vote will go away, which is the fact that they, their ballots will not be counted. Um, um, one thing to consider is, is, is that one thing to consider is that uh, in BC, um, in the last election, there actually were sixteen registered parties. Sixteen registered parties in all of BC. We only hear about three of them. <laughs> maybe, maybe five. Maybe you know about uh, in North Van. You know about the Libertarian Party and the and the Conservative Party. But did you know that there's also a Christian Heritage Party and there's. Uh, 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 BC First Party, and there's all these other small parties. So yes, there are small other small parties, but and it encourages those. As you saw in the election, Donald S. Wilson, N. S. Wilson, is a libertarian, and he actually got fairly far through the voting here. So uh, yes, you you probably will see more parties, but that's also a result of people exercising their preference and not necessarily being confined to one big tent party. And you'll see, instead of those coalitions being within a party with, uh, like the conservatives having that kind of the tax example you had before, you'll have those two parties who might be out there and have to do that kind of collaboration, collaboration out in the open rather than before the election happens. Yeah, let me add something. Here. Yeah. So the the number of parties will not change because the parties that exist they exist. 
Okay? They already 16 parties. Now, will people vote for their party that they really like? Sure. Will they send a member to the parliament? No. Because if you have a party and 600 people like you, you won't send anyone to the parliament in none of these systems. But the people, but we will know at the end of the election, people have revealed their true feelings, and we know that 800 people have this feeling. I, I brought no up, danger is there. I, I brought up the German election results, uh, and uh, Angela Merkel's party won 246 seats, and then the next one won 153 seats, the next one 94 seats, the next one 80 seats, 69 seats, 67 seats. So you might see more parties, smaller parties start start to win, win, win seats and have a more diverse viewpoint. Yes, but, yeah. but the thing that people are worried about is that will every tiny bit of divergent group of people will be in the parliament? No. That's the point. So what what is the, the propaganda there is that if we go to proportional, we will get a proportion of all various extreme ideas in the parliament. This is not going to happen because you still have to meet the quota in the region. Maybe if people have other questions, they can come and ask us. Yes. Sure Thank you very much that you spent this beautiful day with us. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Good job for you.